You're in my spot. Thank you. There's so little of it in there. Trader Joe's sells like a spicy mango juice. It's very spicy. If you at all are a spicy wuss like me, don't do it to yourself. I've been putting like a splash of it in lemonade for like a month. Well, hello guys. If you guys are subscribed to my channel and have seen, you know, April was my one year uh, homestead anniversary. That video took me like a month to make and uh, I was like essentially only working on that video, wasn't doing a ton of stuff on the house. And then after that, I got um, to work working on my Suzuki sidekick and I put out those part one and two videos. Are you hamming it up? Are you being a ham? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna ignore you now. I'm filming the video. I'm filming the video. You're being a distraction. So basically what I was saying is that for basically the whole month of April, May, and now we're like halfway through June, uh, I've been just collecting footage that uh, is a little bit disjointed and quite frankly is a lot of uh, animal footage because I've been working a lot and that has taken a lot of time also away from the homestead. And so um, I'm sitting at my desk, which has the two big giant windows. And uh, I look out the windows all the time. And when I do that, I see all sorts of critters. And then I film them for you. But yeah, I've had a lot of really cute <laughs> encounters with the squirrels. Yeah, so I have a whole family of antelope squirrels. Those are the little itty bitty squirrels that kind of look like chipmunks. And there was a whole family of them living like underneath my water tank and then they grew up. And at this point, they are almost the same size as the adults. Um, but I basically have been babysitting them for the last couple months. And they've been getting into everything and no flower is safe. They are trying to crawl over any sort of cage or wire that you put up. Um, they are just super destructive. They ate all of my potato plants, which are in the nightshade family. So like theoretically they should be poisonous and not even eating them, but they did. It's funny cause last year I had so many Mojave ground squirrels and I have seen one or two this year, but it's overwhelmingly been the year of the antelope squirrel. That little baby squirrel will come right into my house if I let him. Yeah, you're being watched. We also have a bigger squirrel that I originally thought was a gray squirrel being like invasive or something. Um, but I finally got a really good close up of it and realized that it has a different coloring. And when I Googled it, I figured out it's a rock squirrel and it is in fact native to the desert. It is a desert squirrel. So that's really fun. Of course, being in the desert, I have a lot of lizards. There's just a million of the little common lizards and it was mating season not very long ago. So some of them were really bright colors. It was pretty cool to see because I hadn't moved here at that point last year. So yeah, I have a lot of common lizards and this year I have a ton of long-tailed lizards. And the fun thing about the lizards is they kind of have a habit, like they will do the same thing every day or you'll be on their route or they'll sun in the same spot every day for a long time. And so I see the long-tailed lizards a lot. They come onto my patio all the time. Were you canoodling? Cause that's a boy, he's all bright. I think there was some R-rated action happening on my doorstep. I heard a scratching at my door. Look, he's trying to get in. 
And for a little while, I had a spiny lizard, and those are really big. Um, but I haven't seen him in a little while, but he's big enough and he's all spiny that I'm sure he's just moved on and has a new routine now and isn't, isn't eaten. <laughs> Just yesterday, there were um, iguanas, desert iguanas, um, and I saw two of them out the window, and I was like, oh, that's cool. So I started, like, I got up, and I followed them around, and was videoing them and everything, and all of a sudden, a third one comes charging in, uh, and they start fighting and everything, and it's like, what the heck? I had one encounter with a little baby rattlesnake that I will just let you watch now. A little itty bitty little snake with a big old fat belly. Oh, that's terrifying. He's not rattling though. He wants to strike. He's sniffing me out. He didn't ever shake though. But it's clearly a baby, so maybe he just doesn't know how to shake yet. Little fatty is going to go live underneath the board. Great. So yeah, he ended up getting completely chucked into the field and traumatized. And I haven't seen him since. Um, if you watched my Suzuki part one video, you will have seen a snake encounter in that video. And I looked at him and he looked at me. <laughs> that was with a red racer and I had another red racer show up on my patio um, maybe a month later. Uh, Mr. Roadrunner hasn't been around a ton. He was around like early spring and I haven't seen him a lot. Uh, since. But I have had a number of creepy crawly encounters. I don't want to spoil any of it, so I'm going to answer the clip here. Holy shit. Look. Oh my god. He's trying to fight me. Then there were some baby bunnies. Um... Okay, I give him some water. Okay, I didn't film it. He was over here. I literally took the shovel and scooped him into this pot and he played dead and just rolled over. I moved him there and he could stay there as long as he likes. He will be safe, I think. I'm not gonna show it to you cause um, little bunny is dead. Um, two guesses. Um, rabbit hemorrhage disease or rattlesnake venom maybe. Uh, either way, I thought he was gonna be okay because he was like moving and squirming around and stuff like he was just trying to get comfy but uh, yeah he was just trying to get comfy because he was in pain. I don't think Teddy came in contact with it. It was laying on the doorstep so I'm just gonna like rinse the doorstep off. I don't think there's any fluid or anything on there, but I'm just gonna rinse it off just in case. And then it's self-contained to a pot. So I'm glad that I thought to move it to a pot so that, cause I think that there's fluid. But yeah, the um, pot itself can just get sterilized or washed out. Yeah, we're gonna have a good, good old dig time tonight. So far, the other bunny, the, the I assume it's his sibling, they seem to be the same age. He's doing really well, um, but I haven't seen him the last couple of days. It makes me worry. Um, but it's been like weeks since that baby bunny. So I'm like, well, I don't know what that other baby bunny died from, but like it's been weeks. If it was something that they could catch, you would have thought he would have caught it by now. So I'm just hoping that he is independent and off doing his own thing. Um, and isn't dead. I also have a handful of like travel clips I guess I'll just throw in here. I had to travel for work. I went to Ohio. <laughs> it's the first time that I've ever been to the Midwest. Um, but I didn't really take any clips of there. I was just working the whole time. But I flew out of Palm Springs and it was sunrise and it was so beautiful. Um, and I really enjoyed that flight um, out of Palm Springs. 
and took a bunch of videos of that and I, I had a layover in Salt Lake so there's videos of the mountains and everything going into Salt Lake and and, and then I stopped filming because I didn't find the Midwest particularly picturesque compared to um, what what you guys are used to seeing me take videos of in my backyard and everything. Um, but after I got back from that trip, um, I went to a dog show with Teddy and um, we did some agility classes that didn't go very well. Um, I entered him pretty premature. Um, for agility, like it wasn't like the greatest experience, but that uh, competition was actually like a really big competition. Like they had a AKC dog show, like the ones that you see on TV there, um, and vendors. And then they also have what's called fast cat. Um, and like they had like scent work and stuff like that, but Teddy doesn't, Teddy doesn't do scent work. He literally can't find a treat if it's in front of him. Um, so that's not the sport for him, but he loves to run. Um, we play ball every night and he runs probably like five miles in the backyard playing ball um, and is very fast. And so we did the fast cat and uh, yeah, the very first run of fast cat, he didn't know what he was doing. They, it's a two person event, fast cat. And I'm obviously just by myself down here. Um, so some random person had him at the end to release and then I was at the end the other end Calling and what it is is a hundred yard dash. So they have a, a lure. It's supposed to be like a rabbit It's a plastic bag on a on a relay and they move the relay and the dog traces it and everything um, And then you're at the end you're calling oh come on come on come on and and then you get you know at the end You can collect your dog on the leash and then you're done uh, it takes like 10 seconds um but the very first run, he had never done it. He didn't know what he was supposed to do. He didn't know where I had gone because 100 yards is kind of far away. He was like, like I gave him to a stranger and he literally doesn't care. He's not like, where's my mom? Where's she going? And I like walked away and he was like, this is my new mom now. Cool. Didn't care, didn't watch me leave, didn't know where I had gone, didn't know where to run to, couldn't hear me on the other side of the, on the field and everything. And so like, we didn't get a score, we didn't get a time. But the second time I had a bunch of people, you know, give me advice and we did a bunch of different stuff. I brought the ball and everything and he got a score the second time. You literally don't care. You did not care at all, do you? You like me? <laughs> And then there was a whole snafu with their computers and I didn't know even how fast he ran. I didn't know how many points he got. But Sunday night, I was able to finally like get some scores and calculate how many points he had and everything. So I stayed one more night and did a day of entry on Monday so that he could earn his very first title ever. So he has an AKC BCAT title. He's fast enough to have earned his BCAT title in one event. Um, the thing is, is that they didn't have any more ribbons left. They ran out of them. And so the ribbon that we got to take photos with was like a loner. They had one ribbon that they kept so people could take photos. And yeah, that show was kind of the end of dog show season. Cause like obviously in California, it's really hot and everything over the summer, things will start back up in October, which is fine. Cause like we've been training, we have private lessons with like a nationally renowned trainer. Um, and so he should be good to go when stuff starts up next year. Good. Jump. Go, 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 go. Around, around, around. Good boy. You dropped the ball. That never happened. You never have that happen. Since when are you dropping poles? Since when are you dropping poles? Good boy! Good boy! I think that's pretty impressive. I'm pretty proud of you. Yes, I am. 
So yeah, that's kind of, um, I guess, catching you up on things. Yeah, I think we'll be moving forward with some regularly scheduled content here. Uh, I have a couple of projects now that we can hop into and so I'll just let you guys watch the clips. I've procrastinated long enough. I'm on a dill kick and I only have dry dill and I bought dill and every time I use the dry dill, I go, why haven't I planted my seeds yet? I have all sorts of um, single-use plastic that I am going to use a second time. Some uh, takeout containers, jello cups, uh, pudding cups, applesauce cups, and yeah, I need to poke holes in all of that to make little seedling cups out of all of them. I can recycle number one and number two plastic here. Everything here is number five. So if it's a number one or a two plastic, first of all, I try not to use plastic, but second, if I if it's a number one or number two, while it's nice and clean and everything and they can't, can't make an excuse not to recycle it, it goes in the recycling. Um, so I keep all the number five plastic because that's like pretty much the only other kind of plastic that's like this. Um, I keep all the number five plastic so that like, it can get used a few more times before entering the landfill since it can't be recycled. Stand up. Okay, this might be a very bad idea. I have vice grips, so they're not gonna fall. Nail. Torch. I don't know how hot to get this. Oh. Wow. which is obviously like the best sick food. Um, and yeah, that's what's going on. Oh, that was a lot. So I put a trench here. The water was coming up to the door. I think I've got it dug out now so that it's um, draining down and away. I got a little trench dug so it'll come in here and all that. 
all that was new. I'm gonna go inside, it's wet. <laughs> so I don't know if I would say this is the biggest monsoon I've ever had because the erosion down my driveway last year was a lot worse. Um, and then the wash goes off that way. But um, it came up my front door. Yeah, I had to dig some dirt up to um, build a little wall because it was all the way up to the foundation. I mean, it has a lot of ways to go, inches, before it's like in the house. But I had no way of knowing that the rain's about to stop. And it looks like it's gonna start again. I don't know what all the ATVs are about. I don't know why they're out here in the thunderstorm. That sounds really smart. Um, it was all the way up to the foundation over here. That's why there's a little pile of dirt here. It's trying to come over here, so I piled some dirt there. But yeah, the main thing I needed to do was build this little trench. So um, yeah, I should be set up for rain if we gonna get some more. Um, but I think the problem is that obviously, well, obviously I have a wall around me. The water can't drain that way, um, and that's uphill anyway, so the water needs to go that way. Um, but yeah, they just fucked with the elevation, um, so I need to get it all smoothed out so that that's not the low spot, that the water drains way out here and over there. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, some water piled up against the fence. But those are the canyons it carved through the mounds coming out and down this way. So yeah, let's go take a look at the driveway, I guess, before, before the thunder gets back, because it was thundering just literally right, right there was the thunder. Yeah, the whole road just turns into a riverbed. If I was really ambitious, I would dig a ditch um, on that side and run it down here where it doesn't hurt anyone. But that's a lot of work. Um, but yeah, that's one of the reasons why this pepper tree is doing so well is because that pond has been there since I've been here. That always would cut, collect water. These ones I've never noticed before, but doesn't mean they weren't there but yeah that one always collects water uh and obviously it just soaks right down which is where the tree roots are so that's why the pepper tree does so well i probably should do the same thing for this palm tree if anybody knows anything about palm trees like let me know because it is doing rough these are the old ones obviously they're dying but the new ones okay so that's the newest one it's looking better but this one came out of the tree this way it looks like shit like everything is dead <laughs> or dying so yeah if you know anything about palm trees let me know what's going on with that if i need to be doing something also when i was gone i got a bunch of wind like a windstorm came in and somebody's garbage blew in also the desert willows are blooming but yeah i already picked up like some um mac and it was like a mac and cheese box and the little cheesy pouch and everything were over here so i very much appreciate everybody's trash making its way to my house the yucca tree bloomed i don't remember if i showed you any of this the yucca tree bloomed i have to wait for these to turn brown before i can harvest them but i do want to harvest them and i want to plant them out in the desert um because those are native also last update uh the mesquite tree is doing great and I don't have to water him now. <laughs> uh, he has a swale around him, or at least a hole in there, so he definitely got a lot of water just now, because um, it's gonna collect there, so.
All right, that's the burn pile. That's Teddy for scale. And I unearthed a bunch of stuff that needs to go to the dump. And then this is where we're at so far. There is still quite a bit that needs done over here. I got tired. Um, my little arms and shoulders are not used to raking that much. But also, there's a bunch over there. So I figured there's a spot in here that I can use. Um, but it's super wide and clear and all that stuff in there is dead. There was a fire here, you can tell. Like everything, everything like this was all burned. So it all needs burn again to like actually burn it down now that it's super dry. There's more, um, there's like dead bamboo along that that needs burned. There's big burn piles over in that corner and that corner that had just been stacked up from when they um, cleared out the land and all that makes me a little bit nervous, even though it's pretty far from the house, that if there was ever a wildfire coming through, it would hit all of this stuff and just go crazy. But it's very satisfying to go from like literally this to this. And obviously when it rains and stuff, this the color difference will get taken care of a little bit more. The wind and everything, because now this is loose to fly away. So give it a couple of months, maybe a year, and you won't even be able to tell that this was here.